All right, my name is Aria. I am an application engineer on the SOLIDWORKS side for CATI in our Bellevue, Washington office. Today we're going to take a look at some sheet metal tips and tricks. So kind of the you know beginner to intermediate level, if you've just kind of started working with sheet metal and you know the basic commands like base flange and edge flange, kind of how to take those to the next, next level. We are going to be looking at um, some more intermediate topics as well. So hopefully if you're one of those seasoned veterans out there and you've been using sheet metal for quite some time now, there's still maybe a, a tip or trick or two in here that'll, um, that'll, that'll maybe be new for you. So in the presentation today, we're going to start off by looking at um, some kind of basic ways of taking modeling to the next level. So again, taking those basic sheet metal commands like edge flange and base flange and uh, looking at a couple of different uh, types of ways we can create bends in sheet metal parts and, um, and create different types of sheet metal features. We're then going to look at multi-body modeling with respect to sheet metal. So specifically working with a sheet metal model that has multiple sheet metal bodies as well as standard solid bodies and a couple of tools that we can use when we're working in that environment and those types of scenarios. And then we'll finish up today looking at flat patterns and a couple of quick tricks that we can do with flat patterns. For the presentation today, we're going to be looking at a case study of this guitar stand for a Gibson Les Paul. So we're going to make this guitar stand uh, starting off with just a basic uh, bass flange that's already been created. We're going to go and you know add a number of features, look at a number of topics in order to finish up the design for this guitar stand. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and get into SOLIDWORKS here. Again, we're going to start off by looking at a couple of um, beginner to intermediate topics uh, to really take that sheet metal modeling from that sort of beginner entry level just to the next step. All right, so to start off here, we've got the model of the guitar, and we've got a basic sheet metal base flange here. We already have the sheet metal feature added to our tree, and this main flange added as just a, a base flange feature. We're going to start off here by looking at the sketched bend command. To do a sketch bend, we're going to have to start a sketch, so I'll start a new sketch on that face. We'll go ahead and just make the guitar transparent here so we can kind of see what we're looking at. And to do a sketch bend, I'm just going to sketch in a line. So we'll just create a vertical line here on this existing tab. Add a couple quick dimensions. Really, we just need the one to define how far away it is from that left edge there. We'll go just two and a half inches here. And so here we can jump directly into the sketch bend command. Now the sketch bend command, all we have to tell SOLIDWORKS is what face we want to use as the fixed face, the face that we're bending up from. In this case, it's going to be the left hand of the part here, left hand side of the part. And here we can kind of see the bend that SOLIDWORKS is inputting. So basically, it's bending up right down the, the line that we just sketched in. We can enter a value here. We'll go to maybe 80 degrees. We have full control over the bend position. I'll click OK to add that sketched bend. Sketch bend is a great command to use when you have, maybe you have a stock size of sheet metal already and you want to utilize that and you, you don't really know um, exactly where an edge flange would go but you know where you want to put a bend in. It's a great use case for using the sketched bend command. All right, so with that first bend for kind of the side support of this guitar stand here, we are going to need to cut, cut away in the guitar stand so that we can actually rest the guitar in there and it, it's not going to be interfering there. I've got a sketch already created for the profile that we can see here. So go ahead and take that profile sketch and go straight into an extruded cut. This profile sketch was made on the right plane, so you'll see that it's, uh, it's not actually on that face that we're going to be cutting away, but that's okay. We'll just go ahead and go with the through-all cut, make sure it's cutting away from the part there. And we really only want to cut that sheet metal body, so we'll make sure we're cutting only that body. Now, when this cut comes in, if we kind of zoom in here, we can see that it is kind of cradling the guitar nicely. But looking closely, what we'll notice is that the faces that were cut aren't really aligned to the sheet metal. It might be kind of hard to see here, so we'll go ahead and measure. And if we measure these two faces, we'll see that they're not perfectly perpendicular. We've got an angle that's greater than 90 degrees there. That might seem okay, but if we were to flatten this part, what we'll notice is that we're going to have an extra little amount of kind of overhang here. So you can kind of see on this edge, we're getting an extra little amount that that's going to be really hard to cut out. We're eventually going to cut this out in a water jet. So in order to make sure that we don't get that extra little bit of material there, what we'll do instead is we'll do 
in the, in the cut extrude command, we'll just edit that command and turn on the normal cut option. What normal cut will do is it'll keep that cut perpendicular to the sheet metal face. So even though this sheet metal face is bent up 80 degrees, it's not exactly in plane with that original sketch that we're using for cutting, it's still going to keep that cut perfectly normal. So now if we measure the faces, if we zoom in, you can kind of already see that they look a little better. And if we measure them here, we'll see that they are now perpendicular to each other. So that'll be a lot easier for us to water jet out down the line. Okay, so now at this point, we want to create a few legs here. We've got our side support for the guitar, uh, but we kind of want to create some legs so that the back and the side arm here are not just resting um, directly on the bottom. To do that, we are going to need to make a cut, and we don't really have a, a plane down here that we can use to cut out this sort of interior section here. And we can't create that cut from the flat pattern, because if we go into the flat pattern and try to create that cut, we're going to run into the issue where the cut is going to come in in our tree underneath the flat pattern. That's not going to work. So what we'll do here is we'll use the unfold command and simply choose the fixed face and the bend that we want to unfold. And what we'll get here is a flattened version of the part, which we can then use for modeling. So now that the part is kind of flattened out, we're not actually in the flat pattern, but we can go ahead and make a new sketch on this face for this cut. So we'll just put in this sketch quickly here, just do a quick rectangle, add a couple relations here, and a couple dimensions to finish off this sketch. And once this sketch is fully defined, we can go ahead and do another extruded cut here. Now for this extruded cut, we're just going to go with a blind cut, and we're going to turn on this option link to thickness. What link to thickness is going to do is it's going to keep this cut linked to the thickness of the sheet metal that we're using. Turning this option off will allow us to punch in a value, a typical depth value that we would punch in on a blind cut here. But turning link to thickness on will keep this cut always linked to the thickness of the gauge of the sheet metal that we're using. So if this gauge ever changes, this cut's always going to go all the way through. The way that SOLIDWORKS achieves this is by actually adding a global variable. So if we look at the equations folder here, we can see that um, because we're in a sheet metal part, SOLIDWORKS has added this thickness global variable. So this is important because we can use this thickness global variable elsewhere. So let's say we're doing just a regular solid extrusion. We can use this thickness global variable there. We do have to be careful, though, because we can't create another global variable named thickness. Anytime you're in a sheet metal part, SOLIDWORKS is always going to need that um, string, that thickness variable empty. All right, so we have the cutaway here for the legs. We go, need to go ahead and just fold this back up. So to do that, we'll use the fold command. Now SOLIDWORKS recognizes that we already used that fixed face for an unfold command earlier. So all we have to do here is collect all the bends we want to fold. In this case, it's really just that one sketched bend and fold this back up. All right, so this is starting to look pretty good here. The next command that we'll look at is the hem command. So hem is one that I see a lot of people kind of overlook it. They sometimes will use the edge flange instead when a hem might actually be easier. What we're going to do here is, uh, you know, I've got wood floors in my apartment, and I don't want to scratch up those floors. So we're going to hem these two bottom edges, number one, to keep the uh, kind of get rid of the sharp edges here, number two, to also add a little bit of strength here to the bottom of the guitar stand. We'll use the hem command, and we'll go with the teardrop hem. A couple different types and options here. So for this first hem, we're going to go with a 0.05 on the radius to curl up this bottom edge. Just like that, you can see a really quick and easy way of just kind of curling up that edge, breaking that sharp edge off there. All right, so we'll do another hem for the back of the guitar stand. And this time, this one's going to be just a little bit bigger to give it a little bit more support there on the back. All right, so in our sheet metal modeling 102, we, looked, we took a look at the sketched bend. Again, sketch bend is a great command to use when you know where a bend needs to go. 
but you are maybe not quite sure how to achieve that with the edge flange or with any of the other standard uh, flange commands. Um, also, again, if you've got a piece of sheet metal you already know the size of, it's a great way to uh, put bends on that sheet metal. We then took a look at normal cuts. Normal cuts is a good option to use, especially in, in this case since we're going to be manufacturing this using water jet cutting. Um, it's a great option for us to help keep those cuts normal to the thickness of the sheet metal. We looked at folding and unfolding in order to work on the sheet metal in the flattened state without actually going into the flat pattern. That way we can represent that interior link to thickness cut in the bent state. Looked at how SOLIDWORKS uses that thickness global variable to link to thickness. And then we looked at hems and uh, you know why we want to create hems and uh, how easy it is to use that hem command. All right, so next up, we're going to look at some sheet metal multi-body modeling topics. Let's get back into SOLIDWORKS here. The first one that we're going to look at is mirroring sheet metal. Now, this is kind of an interesting one, and you may think that, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a simple one, but honestly, a lot of people overlook the fact that you can mirror sheet metal bodies because it is a relatively new feature. It's only since 2013 that we've been able to actually mirror sheet metal bodies. But in this case, we're going to take advantage of symmetry here. We're just going to use the wall thickness face here, the sheet metal thickness face, and mirror this entire sheet metal body. We'll go ahead and merge it. And just like that, we now have a mirrored copy of the sheet metal body. So, you know, a great way for us to take advantage of symmetry in this part. What SOLIDWORKS has done in this mirror feature is that it's actually added two bends here. So you can see that it did mirror that uh, sketch bend. It also mirrored the hem. It also took that uh, bottom hem on the back side and extended that over. And like any other mirror, this is going to be parametric. So let's say we go back into that sketch bend. Maybe we want to open up the arms of this guitar stand a little bit. Let's go with maybe 75 degrees there. As soon as we rebuild, we're going to see that both sides update like any other mirror would. All right. So now that we've kind of got the bottom portion of the guitar stand good to go, the next thing that we're going to need to do here is create a neck support for the guitar. Now we don't want the guitar kind of falling off the back of this guitar stand, toppling over if someone pushes on it. So we're just going to put a, you know, a little cradle here to kind of keep the guitar from falling backwards. I'm going to need a new plane to do that, so I'll just take the top plane here and copy it up. So we'll put in a new plane, uh, let's say about eight and a half inches up from the top plane there. We'll go ahead and make a sketch on this new plane. And the guitar is kind of in the way. Let's go ahead and hide that again as we create this sketch. So just kind of create a basic sketch for the neck cradle here. Add a couple of relations. Let's go with instead a vertical relation here. Let's see. All right, let's do this instead. We'll just grab out a center line and make this center line vertical. It'll be easy enough to do. There we go. We've got some symmetry there. I'm going to put in a little three point arc here to nicely cradle that guitar neck. We trim out the extra portion of the rectangle and add a few dimensions. So we'll go with 2.6 inches in the back there, a couple of dimensions on the sides. Now, Gibson guitar necks actually are asymmetrical. One of the number of things that makes them a superior guitar. So we'll make that um, kind of asymmetrical shape there to make sure that this is going to nicely cradle the guitar neck. Add in a radius here to finish this off. We'll go ahead and create another base flange here. So since we're creating another base flange, SOLIDWORKS does give us the option to override the default sheet metal parameters. So let's say here we wanted to work in a model where we actually had two different gauges of sheet metal that maybe we're welding together. At this point, we could choose a different gauge if we needed. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it with that 12 gauge uh, steel for now. But do know that this is where that, you know, we could specify a multi-gauge sheet metal part. All right, so I'll just click OK to create that base flange. And what we'll see here is that our cut list now has two different sheet metal bodies. So we've got a cutlist item for that bottom sheet metal body and a cutlist item for that top sheet metal body. We also do have that third uh, cutlist folder for all the guitar bodies, but we're not going to worry about that one. What we do want to kind of keep track of here, though, is since we do have two sheet metal bodies, we are going to have two flat patterns. 
So notice that there is a flat pattern here for that bottom, sort of the main portion of the guitar stand. And then there's another flat plat pattern for that tab that we just made a second ago. You do have to be careful of this if you're using these um, flat patterns in a drawing, you know, which flat pattern you're using, whether it's the main body or the secondary body. Uh, just kind of one thing to watch out for if you're ever working with a multi-body sheet metal part. Now, in this case, we don't want to have this tab just kind of floating up here. We do want to connect these two back together. And we can do that quickly and easily by using the edge flange command. So I'll just go ahead and jump into an edge flange here. Let's start the edge flange from the back of the tab. And all I'm going to do here is select the edge of the top of the guitar stand. And what SolidWorks is going to do is it's going to automatically change the end condition to up to edge and merge. Now you can see what it's doing here is it's calculating the angle that it needs to create this new flange. It's also calculating the length automatically. So this is a great way that, you know, when you have two discrete sheet metal bodies to join them back together, simply just using a regular edge flange and using the up to edge and merge end condition. So just like that, you know, really quick and easy step there to join everything back together. At this point, we only have that one sheet metal cut list item and of course only one flat pattern here. All right, so let's bring the guitar back. And at this point, the uh, model's looking pretty good. We do want to kind of take a look and uh, see if there's any places where we're getting any interferences. Uh, we are, we do want a little bit of clearance here. I'm going to wrap some um, rubber molding around the arms here so that the guitar doesn't actually get scratched up. So the bottom portion looks good. But if we look at the top, notice that we might actually have a little bit of an interference here. Well, new in SOLIDWORKS 2019, we now can do interference detection in a part model. So we're not in an assembly here, but from the Evaluate tab, we've got interference detection just like we would in an assembly. So just like in an assembly, we just need to select the bodies that we want to check an interference between. Go ahead and run an interference detection between those two bodies. And, you know, again, just like in, in an assembly, we still get that kind of red section there that's overlapping. So all is showing us, hey, there's an interference there. So we are going to have to fix that. So we'll go ahead and just uh, change a couple dimensions here bring in the arms of the tab, rebuild, and run another interference detection. And we'll see here that we're not going to end up with any interferences. So doing an interference detection in a part mode, this is a fantastic new enhancement for SOLIDWORKS 2019. It's been a long time coming, honestly. In the past, we would have had to take all of these parts, all these bodies, and actually put them into an assembly to check interferences. So whether you're working with multi-body sheet metal parts, you know, in this case, we're kind of making sort of an enclosure for this guitar, right? A stand for the guitar. The guitar is a standard solid body, and the model that we're making is a sheet metal body. Great way to check to make sure we're not getting into any interferences there. Whether you're working with two discrete sheet metal bodies, you know, checking that you don't have any interferences before you actually cut it out and fold it up and realize stuff's gonna run into each other. Doing interference detection in a part is also great for weldments. So now you don't have to take a weldment and put it into an assembly. Uh, you, you know, you can just check all your weldment members. So great new enhancement for SOLIDWORKS 2019. All right. So with our sheet metal multi-body modeling section, we looked at mirroring sheet metal bodies. Really great way of taking advantage of symmetry. Again, a lot of people don't use it because if you've been using sheet metal for a long time, you may not know that it exists, but it is a great way of uh, taking advantage of that. That was new in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Creating new sheet metal bodies, the process of doing that, just creating another base flange feature, joining those sheet metal bodies together using that up to edge and merge end condition in the edge flange command, and then the new interference detection in part mode feature. Again, that's new for SOLIDWORKS 2019. All right, so let's jump back into SOLIDWORKS here. We're going to take a look at working with flat patterns and a couple of things that we can look at, uh, a couple of flat pattern topics here. All right, so at this point, our design is mostly done. We do want to take a look at the flat pattern because, again, we're going to eventually water jet cut this out. So going into the flattened state here, we'll notice that the flat pattern is actually not the bounding box flat pattern you'll notice isn't really totally aligned to the sheet metal. And SOLIDWORKS is doing that by just kind of picking an arbitrary edge and aligning this bounding box to that edge. It may be trying to kind of save us a little material here, but if we want to change this bounding box and how the part is actually flattening, we can do that by simply editing the flat pattern feature. 
So by editing the flat pattern feature, we can choose the face that SOLIDWORKS is using as a fixed face to bend away from. In this case, just as an example, maybe let's choose this face. And for the grain direction, we'll choose an edge running along that face. And when we flatten it, in this case, we're now going to notice that SOLIDWORKS will flatten from that edge. And if we look kind of normal too here, we can see that it's actually using that edge for the bounding box. So it's aligning the, the edge to the bounding box, maybe saving us a little bit of material here. For our purposes, this maybe doesn't make a ton of sense, flattening from this face. So let's go back into that flat pattern feature and change it one more time to kind of fix it up. We'll just use that uh, original fixed face that SOLIDWORKS has already chosen and choose an edge kind of running upwards along the length of the part there as a grain direction. So now when we actually look at the flat pattern, everything is going to be nicely aligned. The bounding box is now properly aligned uh, to the X and Y axis of the part. All right, so at this point, we do want to actually treat these corners. The water jet's going to have a hard time with some of these super sharp corners. I'm going to go back into the bent state here. There's a couple different ways to do that. Of course, we can just click the flatten button, but you can also right click on the sheet metal body when it's in the flattened state and hit the exit flatten option, which is the first option in the right click menu. It's a great way to just kind of quickly get back to the bent state. Now from the right click menu, when you just right click on a sheet metal body, we can go into the flattened state if we want. We can also turn on this easy option here for toggle flat display. This is a great one. What it does is you can see it's kind of ghosting what the flat display is going to look like there on top of the bent version of the part. So we can kind of get a quick idea of what that flat state is going to look like. You know, maybe if you make a quick change, making sure the flat state is going to look good. It actually does have edges. So if we zoom in here, we can kind of see all the edges. Notice that it is staying on as I'm rotating and zooming in and out. So that toggle flat display will stay on until you just click off. So again, toggle flat display, great way of just kind of looking at a quick flat display without actually having to flatten the part. It's a really great one if you have a really complicated sheet metal part as well. So again, we're going to want to break some of these corners. From the corner treatments in the bent state, we've got several different commands. We have commands here to close and weld corners, as well as two separate commands to break corners and add relief. So I'll enter this break corner command here and break off a couple of these corners. And we're going to want to go with a you know, quarter inch there and we'll do a fillet style break. You can see that SOLIDWORKS is breaking the external corners of those faces there. So that's great. That break corner command does come in before the flat pattern in our tree. So you know, we can see the break corners there. We can see kind of those, uh, those rounded off edges there and that's great. From a flattened state, we're going to get a different subset of commands in the corners drop down. So you'll notice here we really only have the one corner trim command. From this corner trim command, we can do both adding relief as well as breaking corners. So let's say we want to add relief to these, uh, you know, the, the automatic aub round relief there isn't really enough. We want to add maybe a little bit more relief to these interior corners here to make it a little bit easier to bend that up. We also want to break corners. Let's just have SOLIDWORKS collect all the corners that need to be broken. So as you can see, it automatically collected all the corners here. Again, we can do a, a fillet style break with that same uh, quarter inch radius. We'll add filleted corners to the reliefs as well. We'll go with a quarter inch there as well. So really quickly there, we now have added relief in two sections and we've also filleted all the rest, rounded off all the rest of the sharp corners. So this, will, this is going to be great, not going to cut ourselves, but also it's going to make it a little bit easier on the water jet to actually cut this out. One thing we do have to be careful about though is that this is not going to be represented in the bent state. So if we go back to the bent state, what we're going to see here is that we don't have those reliefs. We're not going to have any of those other um, corners broken off. Again, because we created that corner trim feature after the flat pattern. Okay, so at this point we're ready to make a drawing of this so we can actually uh, figure out how we're going to bend this once we water jet this out. So let's go ahead and make a drawing. And we'll give SOLIDWORKS a second as it takes its uh, sweet time here to start this drawing for us. When we start a sheet metal drawing, Hopefully it pops up in a second here. 
Starting a sheet metal drawing here, we do have a flat pattern available from the view palette. So even though we started this drawing with the, the part in the bent state, we've got a flat pattern that we can use. So I'm going to change the scale, make it a little bit bigger here, and drag that flat pattern out. Now on the flat pattern view, we do see that we do get the uh, reliefs and the broken corners that were added. And SOLIDWORKS is automatically going to try and add these bend notes as well. These are helpful, you know, to kind of be able to see how, how much, uh, you know, the degrees of a bend, the radius at that specific bend. But they can also kind of clutter up the view. So you can see here, if I were to print this out right now and if I wasn't looking closely, it might be kind of hard to tell exactly what, um, you know, how much of a bend needs to happen at that line. So when you have a drawing view like this where you have a lot of bend notes that are kind of, uh, you know, cluttering up the view, a great tool to use is a bend table. A lot, I don't really see a lot of people using bend tables, um, but they're a great way to take all this bend information and consolidate it into a table and take it off of the drawing view. So we'll just choose this flat pattern for this bend table, specify how we want this bend table to be numbered. We'll go with the one, two, three numbering there. And now we'll just pop this bend table in the top right corner of our drawing sheet. And so what we can see here is that SOLIDWORKS automatically tagged all the bends. It's got the direction for each tag, so for number one here, we've got an up bend, an angle of 1.1 degrees, and the radius at that bend. So this is a great way to kind of clean up the model just a little bit. What we've done here is we've kind of made it so that, you know, now we don't really have all that bend information directly on the model. It's a lot easier to tell what's going on in the actual drawing view, and all that bend information is just broken out into the bend table there. So again, just kind of a, a good way of keeping that information separate, still really easy to access, but just sort of decluttering that drawing view. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and make a DXF of this to actually use in the water jet. Now we could do that by saving the DXF from the drawing sheet. We can take the drawing and save a DXF here. The problem with this is that we're gonna have to go back either in draft site or in our water jet software and clean up all the rest of the stuff in the DXF that we don't need. Um, the title block, the table here, all that extra stuff is going to have to be cleaned up. So instead what we'll do is we'll just go back to the guitar stand here. Now since we created that flat pattern drawing view, SOLIDWORKS has automatically created this flat pattern configuration. So this is great. It's basically using this flat pattern configuration for that drawing view. But we do want to be careful here. In the flat pattern configuration, we're always going to want to leave this in the flattened state. Our default configuration, we can use that and go kind of back and forth between bent and flattened. But if we go to the flat pattern configuration and actually exit the flat pattern, we'll notice that our drawing view is going to show up in that bent state. That's certainly not what we want here. So just kind of one thing to watch out for when you do create those flat pattern drawing views, SOLIDWORKS is automatically going to create this flat pattern configuration and you're going to want to leave that flattened all the time. Now, since this is flattened, what we can do is just right-click directly on that sheet metal body and just go straight into exporting that into a DXF. So we'll go ahead and do that. We just need a, a name for it there. We'll just use that name and hit save, and that's going to launch us into the DXF output command. From here, we want SOLIDWORKS to output the sheet metal information, and we have the ability here to choose what we want to export. So let's say we want the bend lines. Maybe we also want the bounding box here. We can even choose an output origin. Right now, it's just using the default origin, but maybe let's use this bottom corner instead. And when we click OK, we get a great preview window that pops up that shows us exactly what's going on with this view. Now, we can use this to clean this up if we need to. So let's say, you know, maybe we don't want that bend line there. We can just remove it. But a great way of very quickly taking that sheet metal flat pattern, exporting it to DXF, and then taking that right over to the water jet to actually cut this out. All right, so with that, we took a look at how we can actually change the fixed face, the face that SOLIDWORKS is using to flatten from, how we can change the bounding box grain in order to align the bounding box to the part. We took a look at a couple different corner treatment options that we had from the bent state versus the flattened state. We looked at how we could create a bend table to kind of simplify our sheet metal drawing views. And then ultimately, we looked at uh, using a DWG or DXF output directly from the part in order to, you know, not have to worry about cleaning up the drawing to send this over to the water jet or, uh, you know, laser cutter or whatever it is that you're using to cut out the sheet metal. If you do have any questions, you can feel free to send them to me as well. My email is listed here on this last side. If you'd like to see a live event for SOLIDWORKS 2019, uh, we do have a link there, cati.com slash events. 
uh, to find a number of live events that we're doing all throughout the country uh, if you want to kind of take a closer look at what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2019. And with that, I just want to say thanks, everyone. I appreciate you hanging out with me this afternoon. We'll look at a couple of tri tips and tricks of sheet metal. It, you know, if you'd like to talk about this in more detail later, again, feel free to send me an email and we can do that as well. And with that, thanks again. Have a good rest of your day.